Hi, this is Faith and you're watching The Simple Things. And I'm going to start my first show with one of the simplest things and that is sauce. It seems like an easy thing, but sometimes it's not. And believe me, you do not have to buy it out of the jar. So let me show you. You want a little bit of fresh garlic and you want a little bit of onion. It's not a big deal keeping around. And I buy the garlic already peeled. I'm not going to mess around with that. There's tricks to do it, but forget it. I hold it by the stem side and then I start to chop. It's a lot easier to deal with it that way. As soon as it's a little too close to you, get rid of the piece and move on. But believe me, having a little bit of fresh garlic in your sauce is really worth it. So I'm going to finish chopping these. Keep your fingers out of the way. I know you're supposed to move the food, not the knife, but frankly, I just can't do it that way. So just be careful. And keep your knives sharp. Surprisingly, having sharper knives you have better control. A dull knife slips all over the place and then you've got a problem. All right, so you got your garlic. Peel your onion. If it gets stubborn, it means you got to peel the under layer anyhow. So just grab underneath of the difficult peels and just pull and you'll get it. I like Vidalia onions. I also like red onions. You can use whatever onions you feel like using. You can use shallots if you feel like peeling them. I don't. easiest way to chop an onion, leave the root on. Cut through your onion and then cut it that way. Hold it on the top. Be very careful. Cut it across here and then you can start dicing your onions and these pieces aren't sliding all over the place while you're trying to hold them. If it doesn't cut, it means don't want that piece of onion in there anyway, so just hold it aside. Take this off because it's got a little bit of bruise on it, but the rest of your onion's okay. And then do this one. This way, all you're throwing out is these pieces here. And then you've got your onions and your garlic. Now we are ready to start putting together our sauce. First, I got my pasta water boiling, so I'm going to throw in my salt. You want a lot of salt. It's going to flare up for a second. It's all right. Okay. Throw in your pasta. timer, nine minutes, or whatever your pasta cooking time is. I always put the timer on because otherwise I will forget. Make sure that stuff is in there. I'll stir it after a minute, make sure it doesn't clump up. All right, get a flame on. Flame on! I know I'm cheesy. All right, so you have to start your pasta sauce with a little bit of pesto. Just get it yourself a jar of pesto. You can make it and it's awesome, but you can buy it in a jar. All right. Wooden spoon. This is your best tool. Okay. Once it heats up, fill in your onions. You want to let your onions fry up a little bit before you put your garlic in so your garlic does not burn. A little bit of olive oil. And while your onions are cooking, you could throw in your salt. I use pink salt, 85 minerals, a lot more absorbable. You're not going to get kidney stones from it. And a little bit of pepper. Your salt and pepper are best buds. All right. starts up I'm gonna give this a quick stir because you don't want clumpy pasta make sure all the all the guys are in the pool here all right so that's good to go now got your onions going toss in your garlic you want to let these crisp up just a little bit before you put in your tomatoes and the rest of your spices 
They're mostly going to cook in the sauce. You fry them up a little bit crisp just because it gives it a little bit more flavor. Look how pretty that is already, right? It already smells awesome too. smell o vision Okay? Now, tomatoes. I use organic tomatoes. Tomatoes get a lot of pesticides on them and you just don't want to eat it. So just get the organic stuff. I like to use a combination of crushed tomatoes and then I use a little bit of diced tomato to give it a little bit of texture. If you like sauce, like just like a jarred sauce and you're used to that texture, then just put in the crushed tomatoes and it's fine. You can cook it just like that. But I like a little chunk of tomato in it. So, got my crushed tomatoes in there. Set that aside. Diced tomatoes, leave the juice in there. It's all good stuff. All right, your diced tomatoes. It's almost like you crushed your own tomatoes for your sauce, which sometimes I'll do, but let's face it, we don't have the time for it. You're lucky you're making your own homemade sauce, right? I hear you. So you get all those in there, make sure it heats up. Now I know that you just put garlic and onion in there fresh, but you want a couple levels of flavor. That's a very Italian thing is different levels of flavor. So I'm still gonna put in some powdered garlic and some onion powder, whoop, there it goes. Gotta watch out for that. Turn your temp down to medium. Basil, even though it's in your pesto, you want some dried. I grow my oregano in my garden. I leave the whole, leaves whole. I crush it right before I put in the sauce. I'm telling you that the smell is out of this world and it's worth it. A little bit of crushed pepper flake. You gotta have a little bit of spice in there. It's not gonna make it too spicy, but you gotta have it in there. And last but not least, and this is just a Longo thing, so you're lucky I'm giving you this secret, but a little bit of turmeric. Not only is it anti-inflammatory and potentially anti-cancer, but this little bugger puts something in the sauce that you can't explain until you try it without. So a little bit of turmeric in there. Look, it already looks gorgeous. Now, this is my basic marinara sauce. Doesn't have any meat or anything and anything else in it. My, we like to cook sometimes a piece of chicken in our sauce. If I'm just going to make a, a straight up marinara sauce, but I want to sweeten it up a little bit. If you have to cook it in a hurry, there's a couple of tricks you could do. Get a little bit of um, chicken base, which is like a paste. It's like a bouillon, but it's in a jar. And you put a little bit of that in there to flavor it. Uh, you could put some concentrated uh, tomato soup right into the sauce and it'll make it taste like it's been cooking for a little while. Um, so if you have to make this thing in a hurry, you can if you don't have a couple of hours. Otherwise, I recommend letting this thing cook for a little while because the flavors develop and you'll have an awesome sauce. Now we're going to make uh, pasta carbonara, which is um, very, very fattening. It is not health food, but it is absolutely awesome. And you're probably going to spend a lot of money for it at a restaurant. Don't. It is incredibly easy. We're going to start with a little bit of pancetta. You can use regular bacon if you want. If you can't find pancetta, it'll work just fine. I picked up my pancetta at the farmer's market. And I get it in real thick slices so you can get nice big pieces. But again, if you have to use the, the bacon, that's fine. Try to get slab bacon if you can. If not, just be careful when you cook it. Get this pancetta all cut up. There's some nice chunks, because that's much more pleasant to eat. Okay. Just do it all at once. Careful, of course. And as always, nice, sharp knives because you want even cuts for even cooking and you never know when you might need to defend yourself. All right, so we got our pancetta all nice and cut up. Move this aside. You also want to use a good bit of parsley. So I'm gonna pull some of that out. I keep it already washed. Keep it moist at the stems. 
and you're good to go. Rough chop your parsley. You don't need it in super small pieces. You really want to have those big pieces of herbs inside that carbonara. There's a big difference. And then that's all your chopped ingredients. Now we're ready to put the pancetta sauce together. A little bit of olive oil. You can use coconut oil or grapeseed oil or some other healthy oil that you would like. Olive oil can be a little bit inflammatory, but it is very healthy for you. You do need a little bit of it in your diet. There's your pancetta or your bacon, whatever you're going to use. And you want to let that fry up crisp. Sometimes I like to do little individual plates at a time, especially with pancetta because or with carbonara because you have to eat it as soon as it's ready or it becomes this congealed mess and it's not that fantastic flake from heaven. So let your pan try to fry up a little bit and make sure it gets nice and crisp before you throw together the rest of your sauce. So once you see your pancetta or your bacon getting a little bit crisp, that's when you're going to start throwing together the rest of your sauce. Now, this is how it's usually done. Sometimes you see cream in it. The traditional way to do it is you get a little bit of your pasta water, which you use in your sauce anyhow. Take yourself some pasta. Okay. Throw the pasta right into the pan. And absorb up some of that goodness for a few seconds there. Then you can do some salt. You don't need a lot because you got the salt from the bacon. Always pepper. Stir that up a little bit. A couple of egg yolks. I recommend saving it. You can use it for a couple recipes, I'm sure. If you're lucky like me and your kid likes scrambled egg whites. Stir that up very quickly because you don't want scrambled eggs. You just want a nice little sauce. Uh, a little bit too hot, but that's okay. Parm cheese. You got your fresh chopped parsley that you just took care of earlier. All right, stir that up. Take plate. Throw everything in there. Get your pancetta on top. And there is your plate of pasta. And that is a basic carbonara. If you wanted to do it with the cream sauce, what you're going to do differently is when you put that pasta water in there, you're going to put the cream in there and let the cream warm up. And then you're going to put in your egg and all your other stuff, your salt and pepper and everything. And you make it the same way from there on. And that is pasta carbonara. For the red sauce, um, you can also add a little bit of ground beef. Put that in there when you're frying your, uh, your onions and stuff. Um, you can have some little bit of sausage or something like that. And if you have any leftover, throw it in a bag, lay it flat in your freezer, freeze it up. It's a lot easier to thaw that way. Always save your sauce. Even if it's a little packages for like dippies and stuff like that, trust me, it's worth it to make your own sauce. I hope you enjoy and let me know how it works out.